Hi, Redkin family. My name is Chris Gallio, and I was part of the Redkin Artist Network from 2001 to 2008. During that time, I had the opportunity to work very closely with some of Redkin's top artists and had some really great experiences. So I left Redkin in 2008 because I was just learning how to be a new salon owner. So what have I been doing since? Um, since then, in 2006, I opened my own salon. Um, I got my 200 hour yoga certification. I got married. I expanded my salon in 2014. So we doubled in size and moved to a larger location within the same plaza that we're in right now. Um, let's see, I did a fitness competition and I had a baby and her name is Sloan Noel. She's 16 months old and she's just amazing. So we became a summit salon in 2009 attended our second summit in 2000 and I think it was 2012 and we're attending our third summit in Tampa Florida this month um, when we expanded into our new location in 2014 um, I brought my salon manager on as uh, a shareholder with the company so we've really come a long way with growing the business and the stylists within it um, so why Redkin? Why do I want to come back? It's a company that I've been using for the last 20 years. Um, it's a company that I know very well and am very confident in. Um, it's a company that I trust and has never failed me. Um, the education is just amazing as you know, <laughs> education is number one uh, with Redkin. So. I just feel uh, this time around that I can bring a new perspective to um, teaching. So when I was with Redkin before, I taught hair color and how to build a successful hair color business behind the chair. And now having owned my own salon for almost 15 years, I feel that I can bring a new aspect with um, the business end and how to make a lot of money doing hair color behind the chair and have a ton of fun doing it at the same time. Some of the greatest memories that I have made in my life so far were when I worked with Redken and I'm at a really great place in life right now and I'm just ready to jump back in with both feet. I miss Redken, I miss the culture, I miss the friendships that I made, I miss the camaraderie, um, I miss the education. Being so education focused in business as we are, um, the educators that have come in have really inspired me to want to do this again. And I just feel like I'm ready. We're in the process right now of relocating our salon to an A location with a lot of foot traffic and we're really looking forward to it. Um, starting from scratch, totally new, and rebuilding a new state-of-the-art salon. So for the past 15 years, I've been coaching and mentoring numerous associates that have come in through our doors, um, training through the associate program, and I feel like I need a mentor and coach myself. There's no one here for me to really look up to or um, that can take time out to mentor me and I feel like that's the missing piece in my life right now and I, I would love uh, to have a mentor and a coach so I am hoping that you'll welcome me back with open arms and I'm really looking forward to take this journey again thanks This is our client that we're gonna be working on today. Everybody meet Erica. 
She's a first time client of the salon and she came in with a picture of a full head of baby lights, very blonde with a shadow root or often referred to as a root smudge. So we had a really thorough consultation with her and in our consultation, we talked about her hair color history, what she has on her hair. That's gonna gauge whether I'm able to achieve today what she's looking for or if it's going to take multiple visits. We also talked about her maintenance products. What kind of products are, is she using at home? We also talked about her maintenance. Is she more likely to come into the salon every six weeks or is she more like every 12 weeks? That's also gonna gauge the longevity of the look I'm going to give her. And we also talked about budget, money. We wanna know what her budget is and if this is something that is within her budget. So when she came in, she told me that she was not using professional products on her hair. It wasn't Redken and it wasn't Pureology. I could feel a buildup in her hair, almost like it had a waxy coating to it. So that right off the bat told me that I needed to do a pretreatment on her hair. So we're gonna talk about that in just a minute. So after Erica gave me the go ahead with everything, I immediately brought her over to the shampoo bowl. The first product we used on her was called Pre-Art. So Pre-Art is a chelator. So what that means is it's put onto the hair to lift all of the minerals and the buildup that may be in the hair to the surface. So it is not water soluble. So if you put it on wet hair, it's almost like mixing oil and, and water together. So the way that it's applied is on damp or dry hair. You can cap it if the buildup is severe or leave it on for five minutes. Now because Pre-Art is not water soluble, it doesn't just rinse out of the hair. It needs to be shampooed out. So the next step, step number two, would be Clean Maniac Hair Cleansing Cream. And this is a clarifying shampoo. So after we use the Pre-Art and everything is brought up to the surface of the hair, we use hair cleansing cream to rinse it away. I usually do two shampoos just to make sure that all the buildup is gone. Our third step, our old trusty Extreme Cat. Cat stands for cystic acid treatment. So anytime anyone goes through a chemical process, um, whether it be color, a perm, a texture service, anything like that, we break down the bonds in the hair. And we're always left over with something called cystic acid. And that is what CAT is meant to do. It's meant to go into the hair and repair the bonds in the hair to even out the porosity and strengthen the hair. We spray this on to damp hair and we leave it in for three to five minutes. We rinse it out after, and if a light condition is needed, just for detangling, I also choose to use Extreme because it's a protein base. So if we're going to put hair color onto the hair, I always call this like fly paper for hair color. So if there's no protein into the hair, the hair color won't hold on to it. So that's exactly what CAT does, is it puts protein back into the hair so that you're gonna have more longevity out of your hair color. So after we did Erica's pre-treatments, we took her back to our chair and we blew dry her hair to prep her for her lightening service. So today, we're gonna be doing a partial highlight on her hair with diagonal back and diagonal forward sections. So this is how I typically do a partial highlight in the salon. So I'm gonna show you one that I've already prepped. This is a benchmark. She was done just the other day. As you can see, one side of her head is already styled and I'm saving this side of the head so I can show you guys later how to create some really cool beach waves in the hair. So what I did with her was a full highlight. I shampooed it, dried it, and then I tapped in 05N Walnut in her zone one area and then I glazed with pastel peach and pastel pink in her zone two area. I processed that for 20 minutes total, dried her, blew her out, and we'll talk about her styling products later. So here's an example of what the foil pattern will look like after it's all completed. So the first thing that we're gonna do 
is separate the head into four quadrants. So as you see on the drawing, we're gonna separate the head from left to right, and then we're gonna section out the sides from the top. You're gonna to clip that all away, and then we can get our pattern started. So I just wanted to flip her over so you guys could see all of the baby fine foils that are all placed around her hairline. That's gonna give us that look that when she pulls her hair back, you'll be able to see those very fine pieces that lay right around her face and hairline. Okay. I'm just gonna put her away for now. And then I've got this one already sectioned out. So I did half of the head already just for time purposes. And then we're gonna get started on the top of the head. So again, you're gonna section out into four quadrants. Section out the back from left to right. And then section out the top. So we're leaving that last so that I can show you this diagonal forward zipper pattern. So we're working with diagonal foils because diagonal lines create softness and movement around the head form. So I always tell my clients that this will grow out a lot more gracefully for them. So it'll allow them a lot more, um, it'll allow them a bit more of a natural grow out. So as opposed to placing horizontal foils in the head, when the hair starts to grow out, you'll be able to see exactly where you place those highlights. Okay. So our product of choice today is gonna be the new Flash Lift with Bonder inside. This has become my new best friend in the salon because in the salon, time is money. And because the flash lift has the bonder inside, it's saving me 10 minutes at the shampoo sink. So how it's mixed. Flash lift with bonder inside, I mix 40 grams of the powder to 60 grams of your peroxide developer. It can be used with 10, 20, 30, or 40. Flash Lift has the ability to lift up to eight levels, and it's uh, because it has the bonder inside, it helps to protect the bonds in the hair as you lighten. So again, that's why I love it. We don't have to put any additives into it. It's already there for you. So like I said, it's a time saver for me. Okay, so what we did with Erica is we sectioned out her sides and also those back two quadrants. So we went in and placed diagonal back foils all through the back two quadrants. We placed those baby fine highlights around the face in a diagonal pattern, diagonal back. Went all the way up the side, all the way up the other side, and then we're gonna get started with that zipper pattern for the top. Okay. So again, here's my product that I'm working with, Redken Flash Lift Bonder Inside. I'm gonna take my first section, which is gonna be a diagonal section, uh, about maybe like an, an eighth of an inch into her hairline starting from the center, slicing all the way back. So as far as slices go, I'm gonna be working with slices and micro stitches, which are also referred to now as baby lights. It's really nothing new, it's been around forever. So my first section again is going to be from that middle diagonal forward to where the foil stopped on the other side. So just like that. Now, if I wanted those baby fine highlights right around her face, so if she were to pull her hair back, she would see those highlights that fell right around her face. I am going to weave right around the hairline instead of taking that initial slice. So that first micro stitch, I'm literally gonna go in and do a baby fine weave right around her hairline. 
I try not to make everything too symmetrical because I feel like um, stitches that are perfect don't really create much interest in the hair color. For me, I like to color hair um, and that's a little bit more natural looking. So I clip that away. I'm gonna take my micro stitch, take my foil in between my thumb and my pointer finger, grab the end of the foil, go in with my comb at the bottom, fold the foil over the comb and pop it right in around the hairline. Okay. And then I'm gonna dip my brush in my lightener, get enough product on the brush, wipe off one side so that it stays neat as I'm working from the bowl to her hair so I don't drop any on the floor. My first point of contact here is gonna be about two inches down. I'm gonna to start to work my product down the foil and then slowly work up to the top. Not all the way up to the top of the foil, but just about. I'm gonna place my hand underneath and then spread my product all the way down the foil so that everything is nice and saturated. And then I'm going to fold my foil halfway, seal at the bottom, and then fold it right up to the top, press it apart at the top, and then fold in my corners. I'm gonna take my next section just like that. I'm almost doing like a back-to-back -back micro stitch. So this is gonna create those money pieces or a maximum amount of lightness around the hairline. So again, pick up this hair, grab my foil, right in between my thumb and my pointer finger, fold the foil over the comb, pop it right in. Dip my brush, wipe off one side for neatness, and start applying about two inches down, slowly working my way up to the top of the foil, but not right to the very top. I don't want it to bleed underneath. And then I'm gonna take my hands right underneath Trying not to lift the foil up too much, that could cause slipping. Trying to keep it as flat as possible. Painting the product all the way down nice and smooth. Again, folding my foil, sealing at the bottom, folding it up to the top, pressing in the center, and then folding my edges in. I'm gonna leave out some hair on this next one. So I'm just gonna take a slice and then I am going to skim the surface with my next stitch. So as opposed to doing something like this, which is gonna create peaks and valleys in my stitch, I'm gonna skim the surface. So I'm gonna come in with my foil comb and just very lightly work up and down or in and out. By skimming the surface, it will allow me to get a lot closer to the scalp as opposed to foiling or taking my, um, my weave up and down. So again, painting my product all the way down. And then folding my foil halfway up again, halfway press in the center, and then folding my corners in. Now I'm also working within the round. So the head form has many changes in direction, right? So if I start to take my next section parallel to the one I just did, would you agree that there is two changes in direction here? So wherever I lay my comb, there's a flat spot here, and then there's another flat spot here. So if I just tried to take this all in one slice, when I folded it up, it could create inconsistencies in the hair color and start to pull away at the sides. So I could take this all in one shot and do one foil here and one foil here, but instead I'm gonna turn her around and start to work on the other side. That's gonna create my zipper pattern. Let's try to get her here so you can see. I'm a little closer. So again, I'm gonna foil right on her hairline. So taking those little baby fine micro stitches out. And 
And then going in with my foil, folding it over the comb, popping it right in at the hairline. And then again, applying my product about an inch, two inches down, and then painting all the way down. Slowly working my product up, and then folding my foil halfway, and folding my corners in. I was taking all of these foils out at the sink the other day, and one of the girls said, oh, that gives me so much satisfaction. Like those YouTube videos now, when they start to pull all the foils out around their hairline, it, it is so cool watching them come out. So again, it's almost like taking back-to-back -back micro stitches, creating that very fine section, painting halfway down, and slowly working my product all the way up. Another really cool hot tip is when I take my foil underneath, I don't wanna lift it up, and I don't wanna turn my hand horizontally like this. It's going to create bumps when I apply the hair color. I'm not sure if you can see that, right? So instead, I'm gonna take my hand and turn it vertically so that I get a nice, smooth, consistent application with the color, okay? Fold it halfway. So I'm gonna do one more here, again, just like the other side. Slice it out. And then I'm gonna skim the surface with this one, taking again a very small micro weave. So a lot of people, um, well, I guess the girls in the salon have said or asked, now do you charge extra because the product now has the pH bonder inside. Coming from a business standpoint, absolutely. If the pH bonder is already included in the product, that's less work that you have to do, but it also makes the product like a luxury product. So absolutely, we still charge for that pH bonder service. I guess it's a discretion wherever you work, um, but in our salon, we do charge for it. So now I'm gonna to start to take slices all the way back and you can start to see the head is starting to round out right here. So this is probably gonna be my last section there before I switch to the other side. And just like I said, this zipper pattern is going to allow her highlights to grow out a lot more gracefully as opposed to putting in vertical or horizontal highlights through her part. Turn my hand vertically, paint all the way down, making sure that my color is consistent from roots to ends, and folding my foil all the way up. Press in the center, and then fold my corners in. Now again, like I said before, because that section is starting to get too wide, now I'm gonna switch my body position and then move to the other side again. So now you're starting to see that zigzag pattern where the foils start to interlock with each other. So she wants maximum amount of blonde. So instead of taking all these baby lights here, I'm just gonna start taking slices because slices are gonna give me the maximum amount of color and that's what she wants to see. And I can move a lot quicker with slices as well. Um, do we charge for the pre-treatment? Absolutely, yes. That's still time that you're taking out of your schedule. So absolutely charge for that pre-treatment service that you performed on her initially. We usually charge for a conditioning treatment in our salon when we do pre-treatment services like that. And again, now you see where this foil is starting to run into the center of the other side. So if I were to take another slice here, the head is gonna start to round out, which means that it has a few different changes in direction. So once I get there, 
I'm just gonna turn her around and then start on the other side again. Taking my slice, picking it up, taking my foil right in between my thumb and my pointer finger, folding it over my comb. I always make sure that my fold in the foil is in the back. If it's folded in the front, and I know some people do this and that's okay, but for me, if the fold is in the front, color could creep under that fold and again, create inconsistencies with the color. And I want this to be as precise as possible. So polishing my product all the way down, nice and saturated, nice and even, no bumps or skips. And that's gonna be our last foil here. I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and practice this and then we're gonna get back to our finish. Okay, now to finish, we can't take a picture of her unless she has an Instagram polish, right? So we're sending her home today with Redken Color Magnetics shampoo and conditioner. So Redken Color Magnetics is specifically designed for color treated hair. It is zero sulfates. So it has the RCT protein complex to treat hair from the root to the core to the tip. Okay. The next thing we used is pillow proof blow dry primer. This stuff is my favorite. I don't know how I lived without this before, but you see it separates. So when you use this product, you want to make sure that you shake it up first before you spray it. So what this product is going to do is protect your hair from the heat up to 450 degrees, and it's also gonna cut down blow dry time. So again, I'm all about time in the salon. Time is money. So if this helps to cut down my blow dry time, that means I can put somebody else in to blow dry and um, charge for it. So we spray this in her hair. What I usually do is section her hair and saturate each section all the way through. Just make sure that you're not spraying directly on the surface and that you're applying it all the way through. The next thing I used on her was velvet gel. Velvet gel is a cushion gel and all of the girls here always joke and they say if I could put this on my cereal, I probably would because it's my favorite product. It's such a versatile product and I love that it makes the hair feel like it has a cushion to it. Almost feels like plushy, like if you were to sit in a really soft plushy couch or sofa. That's why I love this. So we're gonna get started first with our really fun relaxed beach waves. And I'm just gonna show you one more time what she looks like all finished out. So I blue dry her and then finished out with Windblown 05, another one of my favorite products. It's a dryer hairspray that just literally gives that windblown texture, but it's super light. So the first thing that we're gonna do is take a horizontal section or a diagonal section, clip the rest of the hair away. I'm gonna grab my comb and my iron here. I'm gonna take a uh, about a two inch square section. I'm gonna spray the section first with Iron Shape 11. I love to use this product because it has sort of like a light to medium hold um, and it's a thermal spray. So I'm just gonna spray down my section first fuse the section through so the product goes all the way through. Take my Marcel iron and I'm gonna curl away from the face. So I'm gonna start that first curl and then I'm gonna pull the nose of the iron out and then curl over that curl. Pull it out so I'm almost creating like a twist in the hair. And then I'm just gonna tug down really gently on those ends just to create more of a straighter, more relaxed end. And I'm just gonna continue on, comb through my section, spray it with Iron Shape 11, fuse through, grab my iron, start my curl all the way around, pull the nose out, curl over, and then pull out, and then gently pull down. 
These curls are super fast to do in the salon and they're fun. And they're really cool to teach your clients how to do them because nobody's ever seen a curl like this before. So to them, it's something new and they get excited about it. And this is the last section that I'm gonna do for you just for time purposes. Create that loop again, pull the nose out and then curl over and then just keep pulling out and then tugging down nice and gentle. So if you want to leave the curls looking like this, that's totally cool too. Or if you wanna create more of a relaxed texture, you can go in and just finger through it to pull some of those waves out, making it look a little bit more beachy. And then I went in with Windblown 05. And I sometimes like to use this product with a blow dryer just to help give it a little bit more movement. So I spray it and then just lightly shake the curls out. And there we go. And there's our finished look. So I wanna thank you guys so much for your time today and I hope that you learned something new. It was so much fun for me to be here and to be able to share something new with you guys. And once again, thank you so much for your time.